I'm Jareth Kopis, and this is Notes from Underground. In this video, we will be continuing our refutation of the Western lie that there are no Nazis in Ukraine. In the last video, an introduction to the roots of Ukrainian fascism, we were led to the Polish-Ukrainian War and up to the creation of the UVO. The UVO was a group of Ukrainian veterans who covertly planned on continuing fighting the Polish through a number of different tactics. Strictly made up of former military men, a rigid military-style structure was installed by the leader Yevhen Konovalets, a former commander of the Sikh Riflemen. The Sikh had fought in World War I as well as fighting against the Red Army forces and White Russian forces. Konovalets was born in Galicia, while it was still part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1891. He studied law in Alvov, where he organized a protest to create an all-Ukrainian university, during which a person was killed. He followed his radical political ideas to the Prasvita organization that sought to destroy the pro-Russian sentiment felt by many in Ukraine, particularly in the East. Their goals were establishing Ukrainian as the only state language, banning Russian from all schools, maintaining a religious society, building the Ukrainian economy, and spreading pro-Ukrainian propaganda in the name of knowledge, growth, and preserving what they called Ukrainian history. Konovalet's drastic views quickly brought him into a leadership role in the student contingency of the group. Konovalet drew his ideology from the likes of Ivan Bobersky. Bolbersky was a prominent teacher, photographer, and sports enthusiast that publicly spoke about the Ukrainian race being superior to others and that Ukrainian bloodlines must be kept clean. Miroslav Sashinsky also shaped Konovalet's ideology. Sashinsky was another well-known Ukrainian nationalist who was a key figure in speaking out against Poland, having assassinated the viceroy of Galicia, Andrzej Potoshki. Dmitro Dantsov was key as well a writer, journalist, and publisher whose ideas were the main driving point of the UVO ideology, which were of anti-socialism and embracing extreme Ukrainian nationalism. He's well known for his writings on the failures of Ukrainians to achieve independence and pushed for the creation of a new era of nationalism of the deed and a national will, which promoted that the use of violence was necessary to attain their goal. Dantsov looked to create soldiers with what he called hot faith and stone heart, who were not afraid to use any means necessary to destroy any of Ukraine's enemies. His emotional speeches and writings struck home with the youth, who had been for years oppressed by one country's government after the other. His radical ideas led him to other nationalists, and he became an admirer of both Hitler and Mussolini. Dantsov is credited with translating both Hitler's Mein Kampf and Mussolini's La Dottorina del Fascismo. In doing so, he hoped to spread the ideals of nation above all, even ethics. Dantsov did not mince words, and was credited with a great deal of quotes such as, Jews are guilty, terribly guilty, because they helped consolidate Russian rule in Ukraine. But the Jew is not guilty of everything. Russian imperialism is guilty of everything. Only when Russia falls in Ukraine will we be able to settle the Jewish question in our country in a way that suits the interest of the Ukrainian people. Now that we know the creators of the ideological foundation of the UVO, let's get back to their leader, Konovalets. In 1914, Konovalets was part of the Austro-Hungarian army and was mobilized during World War I. He was a good soldier and easily attained the rank of 2nd Lieutenant in the 19th Regiment of the Alvov Regional Defense. In 1915 he was captured by Russia while fighting in the Carpathian Mountains and interned at a POW camp near Tsaritsky Chorniar. These camps were packed with like-minded men such as Andriy Melnik, Roman Sushko, and Fed Chernik, who all became close friends and allies, as well as a few of them later joining Konovalets in developing what was to become Ukraine, Ukraine's predominant nationalist party, the OUN. Before that, Konovalets fled to Kiev, where he organized the Halitsko Bukovinsky Kurin, a branch of the previously mentioned Sikh riflemen. He quickly rose through the ranks and took command of the regiment. 
While commander, he fought against the communist uprising in Kiev, as well as gaining many other victories. Konovalets and his soldiers became notorious for their unrelenting hate of Russia and its people, and because of their extremist views and actions, they were disbanded in 1918 under threat of arrest. That didn't stop him from continuing right where the riflemen had left off, only now in a group that had no formal military backing. Despite the group's blacklisting, they still continued receiving secret funding from the Western Ukrainian People's Republic government. The UVO sought to use any means necessary to push forth Ukrainian nationalism and began taking part in sabotage and assassinations. The Allies recognized Polish rule over Western Ukraine, and many members left the UVO and turned to legal political parties with less extremist views. The UVO then turned towards Lithuania and Germany for support, where anti-Polish sentiment was still high. It gained contact with a number of groups and began training them to fight. In 1929, these groups came together and formed what was to be known as the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, or OUN, with Yevhen Konovalets as its first leader. With a foundation of supposed racial superiority, hatred for the Russians, Poles, and Jews, and willingness to use any means necessary to achieve their goals of Ukrainian superiority, the cancer that is Ukrainian fascism was already developing quickly and had its own unique structure and role in the history that is to come. To learn more about that, look for my next edition to the Ukrainian fascism series that covers the OUN. The greatest weapon we have right now is knowledge, so let's load up and bring war to the war makers.